Okay, we're not gonna get into putting anybody yeah, down, okay? okay? Okay, because we think they're perfect on their spiritual path also. In a tantric view. Now, we might find that hard to, our uh, philosophy might find that hard to agree with, but we're trying to develop our hearts in that must be perfect and I don't get it. Okay? So that would be a um, non-tantric worldview is that things are a mess and it's a terrible and it's going downhill. And in Tantra it would be like, maybe it's a mess and it's terrible and going downhill, but it must be perfect and I don't get it. Okay? I don't get it. But that doesn't mean that I, uh, I'm try attempting to see the divinity in everything. That doesn't mean we ignore, uh, you know, that people are starving, we give money if we can, but whatever. But we are trying to cultivate, must be perfect. This person, you know, how, this, um, how this relates to dating is, this person sitting in front of me is perfect. I can't see it because of all my judgments. I have been taught, we have all been taught to be, you know, everybody in this room has really worked on themselves so they're not prejudiced for race or sexual orientation, hopefully for age. You know, we're trying to become people who are not prejudiced, but all of a sudden, as soon as we put the dating hat on, we're supposed to become super prejudiced against people for their looks, their body size, their income, their age. We're supposed to become super prejudiced people. And in Tantra, we're going, um, what's up with that? Because when you study Tantra for a while, John, you can tell me you've been studying for a while, you start finding just about everybody attractive. But what I'm saying is you find just about everybody sexually attractive. That doesn't mean you're gonna have sex with them. It means you can feel just about everybody's hotness, but that's after you develop yourself for a while. Do you wanna say something?